Now we are moving to talk about figurative language. Okay, what is figurative language? Figurative language is the use of descriptive words that bring your reader into the story. So here you are describing action, but in a way or another, which make it attract the reader's attention. And we got many forms for the figurative language. First, we got the simile. Simile, it means you just compare between two unlike things using as or like. So you just compare two things together. You can compare a person with something, compare two things, two people, a person with an animal. The most important thing in the simile is to use like or as. So how can I know the simile if I am in the exam? The simile can be known if you found a sentence used using and this sentence like or as. And you got an example here. Her smile was so wide. It looked like a piano keyboard. He was as sick as a dog. Jasim is like a lion. Muhammad is like a sword. So here we are using the word like or as. It means that we got a simile. Okay, let's move to the next okay, one, which is metaphor. In brief, metaphor is something like simile, but without using like or as. So we directly compare two things which are unlike without using like or as. For example, the boy was a golden knight protecting his sister from the fire breathing dragon that lives in the sandbox. And we can also say Sarah is a moon, Mona is a flower, Ali is a lion. So here we are comparing two things, two people, two animals together okay directly with without using like or as and this is a very strong one because it's it's much stronger than using the simile let's move to the next one personification from the name itself personification it means that you just bring something to life by using a human characteristic for example you can take a human characteristic and just give it to something. Like if I say, the fire ate the house. So here, ask yourself, does the fire eat? No, but we got eating and give it to the fire. The sea swallowed the ship. Ask yourself, does the ship or does the sea swallow? No, but it means the ship drowned. So here we are just given some human characteristics to things. Like if I say the flower is dancing, okay, the flower never dances, but it means, okay, it's moving right and left like this. So personifications assigns human characteristics and the traits to non-human objects. The pencil fought furiously with a razor battling over the question number three. It's a good one. We got here hyperbole. Hyperbole is the use of gross exaggeration to describe something that could never happen in real life. For example, if I say I can eat an elephant, it will never happen, but it means I'm very hungry. If I say I can drink a river, it will never happen, but it means I'm very thirsty. So. Hyperbole, it means talking about impossible things. Okay. So we can use this in writing a story, make it more exciting. The teacher's voice was so loud, the astronaut orbiting Earth could hear her lecture. Okay. Alliteration. Alliteration is the repetition of two or more sounds. The witch washed out with her lips whispered, Watch what waits you at the bee watching hour. So here we are repeating the sounds, or we got the same sound at the beginning of each word. Like if I say, She sells seashells on seashells. So we got the same sound shh, at the beginning of each word. That's what we call alliteration. 
onomatopoeia is a kind of word that imitates a sound. Example, the cow moves in the pasture. Moo is the onomatopoeia. I can say it in other words, onomatopoeia. It means you can just know the meaning of a word from its sound. You can guess the meaning, like the word bomb means explosion. Like the word crash, it means an accident. Like the word buzz, the sound of the bee. Like the word hissing, the sound of the snake. Like the word splash, the sound of water. Like the word croaky, the sound of an old door. So here, the onomatopoeia just know the sound of the word from its, or the meaning of the word from its sound. Okay, before you just deliver your writing, be sure that you revise and check for the content. Edit, check for grammar, usage, spelling. Okay, a final copy should be flawless. It means that after you use onomatopoeia, use whatever you like from the figurative language. After you make sure that you got all the story or the narrative elements in your story, don't be in a hurry. Okay, just relax and try to make a good revision for your story. Make sure that your story has everything, has all the elements. Make sure that you got the right punctuation. Don't be in a hurry. When you end a sentence with a full stop, start your next sentence with a capital letter. Uh, don't forget to use linkers. Don't forget to include any figurative language you like, which is suitable to your uh, story. Don't forget to edit your writing. It means you check the spelling. You check the grammar. Make sure that you are using the past tenses in your writing. So, just be sure to do all this before you deliver your story. Again, I just want to remind you of the elements of the story before we go. We got about six elements of the story. The first element is setting. What is setting? It's time and the place, the time of the story and the place of the story. Then we got the narrator. It's the person who tells the story and we got two types, first person and third person. And we know the first person if he says I or we. The third person if he uses he, she, they or it. And then we move to the characters. We got main characters and sub characters. And we said that characters could be animals, people, things, but they should have some role in the story. And then we move to the plot, how the story is narrated. And we said that the plot has so many kinds of plot. Okay? So, we got also the uh, conflicts. And we got many types of conflicts. We also talked about the climax and we agreed that the climax is the top of the action, the top of the problem, the turning point in the story. And then we came up to the theme and we, we said that the theme or the moral is the lesson that we get from our story and it could be written or it could be just guessed throughout the event of the story. And then we moved to the figurative language. What are the techniques that you can use to make your story more interesting for the reader? I hope all of you to achieve well in the writing exam, especially when you write the story, just try to listen to this lesson again and put in your mind all the elements of the story and how could you beautify your writing by using any figurative language. Thank you very much.